this is the Pathfinder journey. This is the Pathfinder journey. Please enjoy your wonderful journey as we embark upon this rough ride to embrace these high times and introduce you to yourself, divine, for this. Is the Pathfinder's journey. This is the Pathfinder's journey. And right there is the Pathfinder. Please, you're wondering why. Well, hello, listeners. It's Queen with Sun Kiss Spiritual Consulting, and I'm back again to catch y'all up. Today, we're going to talk about something that's a little personal to me, you know. So, uh, grab a seat. Grab a seat. Leave your comments. Well, your voicemails. I love to listen to those voicemails. Y'all go ahead and leave those voicemails. Um, for the things that you would like to discuss inside this video, I mean, as I get better at creating this podcast, hopefully I'll be able to go live and actually have you guys speak to me. But as for right now, we're just going to tackle some things. I'm just going to get up here and chat it up about whatever it is I'm thinking about at the time. And right now, what's on my mind is my barefoot journey. For those of you who do not know, I have not worn shoes in about, mm, it's been about six months, maybe seven. And, um, why did this come to me? See, here's the thing. Um, I get looked at crazy. Which is fine, because that's kind of the norm for anybody that practice spirituality. And I mean, really practice spirituality. Like, spirituality has basically become a lifestyle for them. Different things go on. And, um, you know, people look at you strange before they question you. Sometimes your sanity is even questioning. Oh, I saw it. Oh. Oh. Sanity. Yeah, it's been like this. Just that one. So your sanity gets questions and things of that nature. Y'all excuse me for the interruption. But, you know, it's per for the cause. Um, back before I came back to the States from Italy, you know, um, I had my little group of mentees or whatever. And they were done working with the root chakra. You know, they felt confident in being able to speak for themselves. I started them with the root chakra because when you get ready to start upon a spiritual journey, being honest with yourself is something that you absolutely need to do. It's imperative for you to actually embrace and progress with the type of growth that you need to have. You have to be able to be honest with yourself. Now, if you're going to continue to lie to yourself and stay in the shit that you have gotten yourself in or continue to make poor ass decisions because you don't want to lose parts of your parts of yourself, it's no sense in you walking down this particular path. Going down this particular path and remaining uh, in filth is only going to produce you even more filth because the objective here is to gather your lessons, your jewels, and things and apply them to your life so that you can manifest into your greatest destiny. That is the purpose of spirituality. That's the purpose of the occult. You are not blessed or privileged to have occult secrets or occult wisdom and knowledge if you are unable to, you know, be honest with yourself about who you actually really and truly are and the things that you may need to change about yourself. So inside of this, we started them with the um, throat chakra because it is the first spiritual chakra in the uh, chakras. 
Red spiritual chakra. Okay, so we want to go ahead and clear that up. So then they wanted to work on the root. Now, me personally, I already knew, had been told by spirit that once you start on this root chakra, ma'am, you are going to become ill. Okay? So, I tried to avoid and put off this root chakra as long as I could because I knew I was on my way back to America. And I didn't want no problems. Well, um, of course, because they were paying me for services, and I don't really want to give my mentees anything that I want to do myself. So, I had to go ahead and do it. So, I did. Of course, when I did this, I became ill. And before I got sick to the point where I had to be hospitalized, I have been doing my meditations and things of that nature. And so you had already told me, you know, you're going to be coming. But when you come sick, I need you to remove your shoes. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> you mean to do what? Take my shoes out. Like, what you mean? Because it's not abnormal for me to go barefoot. I've walked around barefoot pretty much all my life. Not full time. I wore shoes. I mean, I went to school uh, with shoes on. I went to work. With shoes on, I mean, but whenever the opportunity presented itself, my shoes will come off. So now, spirit is telling me to take them off. Do not wear them. Then I was led to all these different places. Things coming from my background because I was working with the root chakra, and inside of working into root chakra, it makes me revisit some things that led me into spirituality in the first place. So I go back and um, continuously get all these Bible scriptures. Bible scripture after Bible scripture after Bible scripture. I'm like, hey, what's up with all the Bible scriptures? And Spirit said to me, these are your roots. You must never forget your roots. And that's true. A lot of people into spirituality, they forsake all of the religious teachings that they have gotten, no matter what their background is. And I'm here to let you know, that no matter what your uh, previous spiritual practice or religious practice was, you're still very mm. integral to your uh, <clears throat> spiritual life. You know, there's a lot of doctrine and dogma that comes with religion that actually teach against the occult. And unfortunately, <clears throat> that's not adequate and that's not true. However, if you actually take the time, <clears throat> go back through these doctrines, these scriptures, and these things with your spiritual eyes, uh, you will know that you'll learn to se separate the dogma from the actual teachings. Because a lot of people that say dogma and run with it. Dogma is actually man-made. And when you actually sit down and analyze all these different religions, for those of you that don't know, I'm also an ordained minister of the occult, okay? So, <clears throat> we've gone through a lot of religious texts and read them and pulled out information. And what I have learned is pretty much they all teach the same thing. It is just the dogma that is being presented to people that does not allow for the expression of the true self, if you will. <clears throat> so... Um, I kept getting all these biblical scriptures about my feet, about my shoes, and then it said, now, let's visit where you are now, which is hoodoo. Hoodoo is very important, you guys, especially if you're going to walk this uncle journey, and you are a descendant of people brought here from the institution of child slavery, and... Why is that important? It is because we were separated from our home. We were separated from our culture, our language, and different things. And hoodoo was actually the religious practice that we were able to cultivate being stripped of our birthright. Okay? So, as a hoodooist, when you look at hoodoo, when you go back into the beginning origins of how it was practiced, the, a lot of people now tend to be stuck on the part of who do where you lay tricks. 
And for the purpose of doing this video, we're gonna go ahead and, you know, act as if though this is like the major be out end all of it. Just for the sake of this video, it's not true. It's more to than that. But <laughs> when you lay tricks, most tricks that are laid in hoodoo have to deal with the foot. For instance, if you want to claim something as your own or bend something into submission or something like that, you would either put the name, the picture, the idea, or whatever inside your shoe and walk on it. That's usually pretty standard for things like court cases. Very simple things to do. If you are trying to own something, possess it, it be yours, you actually would write the name of that thing on the bottom of the left shoe to dominate and own that thing. Um, you have things like hot foot powder and go for the You would actually put this stuff either in somebody's shoe to cross them up, or you would put it in a path where they would walk, okay? So, a lot of foot tricks, a lot of foot work done in hoodoo, and I'm being told to take my shoes off. Very interesting situation here, you know, and I had my battles to go through with that, but starting on that root chakra and getting it aligned actually landed me in the hospital. While I'm in the hospital, I'm continuing to converse with spirit. Spirit comforts me into going ahead and doing what I need to do. So by the time I got out of the hospital, I pretty much was not wearing shoes anymore. <clears throat> Has proven to be a very interesting journey. Um, walking around with no shoes on seems to give people the license to feel as if they can treat you as if you are the lowest of the low. Okay. Now, as with pretty much anything that goes on in America, when it adversely affects other populations and other ethnic groups, it affects us even worse. Now, those of you that have been with me since I even started on YouTube before I actually even started speaking about my spiritual journey, y'all know on my other page, I straight up and down act a damn fool. <laughs> okay? If you want some static and some smoke, I'm the motherfucker to give it to you. <laughs> you know? Thank uh, Spirit for Growth, right? <laughs> so, actually getting better with that, actually me not having on shoes has helped me to become more grounded. The greatest thing about becoming more grounded is, since I've been walking around barefoot, I've been more connected to the earth. I'm more connected even to the floor space because also in Hindu, it is believed that a lot of the spirits that you will conjure up, you come in contact with, they exist. They live in the earth or they sit in the floors. That's why. You know, you typically want to get all your housework and your sweeping done before the sun goes down. Because once you start doing it in the cover of darkness, you start to disturb the spirits that live in the house. Okay, so that's just a tidbit of information for those of you that want to pick it up. Now, walking around barefoot helped me to get more in line and experience more with, uh, what do you call them? Um, the vibration, okay? So when it comes to things like the principle of hermetics, the law of vibration came and it was very helpful. Okay, very helpful. Very, 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 very helpful. Being very good. Tell me better to understand this law of vibration because I can actually feel things. Now before, when I would pick up a stone or something of that nature, it's like, oh, this is pretty, this is cute, I'd go look it up and See what its properties are, see what it meant. Things of that nature. Now, I'm getting to the point where I can actually pick up a stone and feel its energy. I understand what it's supposed to be. Even before I go look to verify to see exactly what it is or what it does, I can feel it. I can walk into a place, and based on how my feet feel on the floor, I can tell if this is a place. Where I need to be if I need to leave. There have been many times where I have stepped out of my vehicle to go into some place or be somewhere and stepped on the ground and got my ass right back in my car <laughs> and left. And it's not a place that I want to be. Reminds me of when I said I prayed 
please order my steps. I was a little lost in my spiritual journey. Like, okay, what am I doing? I just feel like I'm in limbo. I'm sitting out here, nothing's happening, nothing's stopping. I'm just at this standstill. And I was like, order my steps. Oh, yeah? The steps were ordered. Okay. So, it's really helpful in being grounded. Because of this, I learned that this is a breaking away of the natural order and the natural programming of things. I don't know if a lot of you know anything about this, but one of the more popular books that's running around the spiritual community, let me go with my bookshelf and make sure I read the title right. Because I read a lot of books. Women Who Run With The Wolves. A lot of y'all know about this book. There is a story in this book about an older lady who was barefoot and when she was asked why she did not wear shoes she said because she cannot see this is a different type of sight but she was absolutely correct i have come to learn because when you cover your feet it is a lot of things that you will miss because you don't have that sensation you don't have that connection to the earth you don't have that that grounding to be able to feel and understand these vibrations that are going on around you. So if for so some reason all your other sensories are engaged, you know, you may miss out on a particular thing or an issue that may arise or something that may need your attention to help mitigate a problem or provide help or somewhere because your sensories are otherwise engaged. If you were barefoot, you're going to notice it. You're going to notice it. It's going to make you stop and start paying attention. You're instantly going to go into a meditative state or a trance state because the vibration you feel in your feet lets you know that something's in the air and, and you start to look for it. Somebody's <clears throat> knocking in my door. Mm, my son. So. All of these things mm, are important. So what is the actual point of me talking about this? I want to discuss what happened to me last week. Now, I went to this grocery store and when I went to the grocery store, I walked around, I did my grocery shopping, like I normally do, no big deal. And, and y'all excuse me, I'm eating right now. Uh, I do my shopping, and then I get to the register, and my things are being rung up. The police walk in. I have this figure, you know, some mess is going on, even though, basically, from the feeling I felt in my feet, I knew it was something toward me. But for the sake of living in the mundane world, we're just gonna pretend like this has absolutely nothing to do with me and go on about my business. Cause everything doesn't always need your attention. Just cause you're alerted to it, doesn't mean it's actually going to bother you. Unfortunately, this is not one of those times. I was approached by these police as I was leaving the store. This is after the store got my money. Keep in mind, at no point have I been asked to leave or anything. I had just been told by a manager while he was waving his finger at me as if I was some three-year-old toddler to be admonished that I need to put some shoes on at a distance of about 50 feet. So he's not speaking to me. He's speaking at me from a direction, from a distance in which he needed to elevate his voice in order for me to hear him. <clears throat> I ignored him and continued to shop. Well, the officer approached me as I'm getting ready to leave the store. Ma'am, can I speak to you outside? So here I am outside talking to the police as if 
I'm some kind of criminal or something. So, the police officer told me that he was called because I was breaking store policy. <clears throat> now, there is no policy for customers to wear shoes at any store. In fact, <clears throat> to deny somebody to come into your store because they don't have on shoes, it's discrimination. Why? Because people go without shoes for several reasons. Mine would be religious or spiritual and also health reasons. Because a lot of issues that I was having before I took my shoes off, I no longer have them, especially when it comes to my back problems and things of that nature. So I'm like, well, Where's the store policy that I've broken? And you show it to me. To which she said she could. She was gonna go in and get it. I laughed at him. I told him no he wasn't. Because the policy does not exist. He told me, well how do you know? Well, because I've had four incidences at this same store behind my shoes. I've never been, once been asked to leave. Just been told I had to put on shoes. And I asked them to show me the policy. They said I had to wear them. To which they never could. They all gave me an email to some random person and say this random person is going to send it to me. Or they're going to mail it to me. Some foolish things. But it didn't exist. So I'm out here with this officer. For about 20 minutes. Which is the issue I didn't press. It's not the officer's fault. I would have been out there a lot less longer if I had a press of issue. Reason being that because I had not committed a crime. They could not hold me more than 15 minutes. Well, I was there a little longer than 15 minutes because this officer decided that he needed to take my IDs from me. Because his goal was to see if I had a warrant or something so he could arrest me. So why it's important to feed your ancestors. Because it's not that I had any warrant or anything. <clears throat> but he wasn't even able to even verify who I was or anything from his, whoever he called in my information to because I, either they were busy or they just didn't care to run it. Time ran out, he had to let me go. Otherwise, he would be violating my rights. But because I was able to quote to him that I was not breaking any laws, because I was able to tell him what the health department had to say, because I was able to tell him what OSHA had to say. Because I was also recording and speaking to my audience. And letting them know that you need to have your I's dotted and your T's crossed when you get into these certain situations. You need to go ahead and research these things. Learn these things and know these things so when you get into these situations you are able to articulate yourself properly. That then made the officer become cognizant of what he was doing and he was trying to make sure that he walked the straight line. I must say, even though I knew that he was trying to arrest me, he did maintain a level of human decency with me the entire time. The greatest thing I found out about being um, grounded was normally if I feel violated, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight the hardest that I can. Being granted, I am learning that the pen is mightier than the sword, even if you're not using a pen and sword. I am learning that it's okay to simply be quiet. 
or to simply be cordial in the face of adversity. Because this is just a battle, not the end of a war. And so, because of that, he had to give me back my ID and let me go ahead about my way. To which I went and contacted the corporate offices. Now, what normally happens when people who are barefoot, because there's a whole community of us, and if you are interested in this, go to the website, not the website, go to YouTube, look for a channel called Barefoot is Legal. Um, my um, interaction with the officer is posted on that channel's page, and y'all can actually see me speak with this officer. It was very difficult to not get upset and come out of character, but I, I did it. And the more I sat there and I talked to him, I realized how simple-minded and stupid people are, and how people judge you over the smallest things that have nothing to do with them. They're very insignificant. It doesn't matter, but they have to hold on to this need to be right. They have to feel like they're in control and. They don't have to deal with their authority being challenged. And I'm noticing these things as we're having this conversation. To which, at the end of the conversation, while the officer was giving me 9,900 questions, trying to escalate, you know, this altercation, like, at one point, he asked me for a specific ID. I gave it to him. Then he turned around, he wants my driver's license. Why? Why you want my driver's license? When I asked him why, he wants to escalate it as if he's going to arrest me. Arrest me for what? I've ID'd myself. But I was not in the position to go to jail that day, so I went ahead and gave him my ID. I didn't have time for the inconvenience. If I had the time that particular day, I would have let him arrest me, but I didn't have the time. And that wasn't really my battle to fight that day. My battle was to fight for my right to walk around the world the way God gave me. I see me being barefoot is no different than black people wearing black styles in their hair. I mean, it's told that they can't wear their hair the way God naturally created their hair. I see barefoot. Being barefoot is no different. And so... With that, I was able to maintain my composure. But being grounded has also helped me with it too. I notice when I become angry. I learn to take that anger and channel it back down into the ground so that I can, it can, you know, fan out the vibration send it back to me, because this is what happens, it sends it back to you, but it comes back in a way that can be more productive and conducive. So what I was able to do was actually come home and pick up my pen and send a letter to the actual corporation. At this time, I'm still waiting to hear back from them, but I'm fairly certain that this is a victory for me and for other people who are barefooters because most corporations don't want to deal with being labeled as harassing or discriminatory towards certain demographics of people. People go barefoot for, like I said before, health reasons, spiritual reasons, cultural reasons all types of reasons why people go barefoot but when you break from societal norms prepare expect and know that you will get pushed back prepare and know that you will receive adversity my lesson in all of this because i know this is to not act a fool you know, 
Why is that? For me personally, I used to just stay under the radar. I don't want to be bothered. If I can fade into the background and nobody sees me, then it's fine. When you are a spiritual person, or a person that walks behind the veil, you don't necessarily get to stay under the radar. Because what you were doing, you could be minding your own business, and it's going to spark something in somebody who's not going to like it. And all of the time, it's not because people don't like it. Sometimes it's because you're doing something that people wish they had the courage to do. <clears throat> That's the evil eye stuff. You know, got to pay attention to these things. Once you understand, get to the point of understanding, it becomes easier to accept and deal with people in their ignorance. But it's really amazing to walk around the world and see. Me being barefoot, it's almost like I can actually see the matrix. It's the strangest thing ever. I could be in a crowded place. And it's like an agent <laughs> would identify me. When you get to by the way they would turn, the look they would give, it would, it's almost as if some type of signal went off. And then they would give another signal out to be like, Beep, 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 look, it's a non-conforming person or something. Craziness. Think about it is, I'm breaking no laws. But what I am doing is making it a better place for people to be who they are and to express their freedom of expression, no matter who likes it or not. If you're not hurting anybody, you should be able to do what the hell you feel. Do what I will is the law of the land. Hmm? At least that's one of the concepts that Alex the Crocker came up with. And, you know, we can't take that too much to heart because Crowley came from a very polarized place <laughs> from the time he was a child all the way up until his death. Okay. So, he was a very polarized individual because of polarizing circumstances. But, you have to stand up for yourself. And you will find, if you actually sit down and speak with most occultists, they're not trying to bother you. They want to live their life. They have a divine purpose and a reason for the things that they are doing. And the things that they are doing are typically not harming or bothering other people. They're typically putting good out in the world, but because the methods in which they go about it seem to defy societal norms, they get a bad rep for it. They are challenged. <laughs> they are treated as if they are some type of menace to society. Meanwhile, the same story that's creating this rookie about me not wearing shoes, you have over a hundred people in this store spending money and somehow one person you worried about their shoes and it very well could be the color of my skin <clears throat> that makes me stand out it could be the way i wear my hair that also makes me stand out it could be my size and it could be the way my voice carries all of these things all the things which I have little to no control over, <coughs> but it's me, and I have a right to be here, and when you walk around being unapologetic about who you are, what you stand for, that unnerves people. But this is your charge as an occultist, to make the abnormal norm. up for the little people to fight for your god-given right to be who you are and that is what i'm learning inside of this is also helping me learn to curve my curve my anger because 
I had to learn, like, why am I so angry? Why am I so angry? And it's not as if I'm a person that runs around and just go around knocking the hell out of people, cussing people out on the whip. It is. At the slightest bit of infringement upon my personal universe, I become very upset and it's time to draw swords and do battle. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be that. Why was it that way? It is because growing up, it was almost, this I was always beat into submission. And I don't like to be beaten. I don't like to be bothered. So I said nothing. And I felt like I took so much abuse growing up that when I became an adult, it was like, who wants it? You can get it. I'm grown now. You gonna whoop my ass? Let's do it then. Because I fight back, you know. And I went through that for so long that now I'm learning how to separate that back. It's okay to have the anger. The anger needs to channel out in a different manner. Just because you're upset don't mean you need to go draw your sword and chop somebody's head off. That's not always necessary. And I'm learning that. And to deny people things that are going to make them a better people is... It, it should be a crime itself because what would you rather me do run around and just let I consume me to the point where I am out here assaulting people and things of that nature and now I want to fight somebody I want to assault somebody so you can lock me up is that what it is like what is the reason why something is Little as me not wearing shoes is a problem. I've gone to several restaurants and I had to worry about shoes. I've gone to many government buildings and I had to worry about shoes. Most of the time I'm not bothered. But the few times that I am bothered, it's really bad. I've had the police called on me twice within these, within the past month. I had the police call on me twice within a month. And Or what? At one establishment, the guy called the police and even lied to the police. Oh, she didn't give her ID when she came in. Well, that's not true because I've been in here for over two hours. I was on my way out the door when you decided that she wanted to act like a jackass and start yelling at me. And I mean, this man was so up in arms, and I may know this was a white man because I highly doubt it. He would have spoken or treated a white woman the way he treated me. This man is standing behind the desk. He is so much of a rage. He looks like he wants to jump over the desk and smack the shit out of me. And I'm just standing there looking at him like the orangutan that he's behaving like. Like, what is wrong with you? And he continues to yell and be belligerent and ignorant. And I told the man, you know what? Since you can't talk to me like I'm a human, then you're not going to talk to me at all. And I will speak with your colleague about this so I can get the information that I need. And when I stopped speaking to him, his pride became hurt and he continued to yell, to which I had to lean in closer to his co-worker so she and I could understand what was being said to each other. And when he realized that he was being totally ignored, he got upset, he called the police, he convinced uh, lied apparently the police did not feel like it was something worth them coming out for so they asked to speak to me over the phone at which point I told them look the man is just upset because his pride is hurt they said well he said you did not ID yourself I said he is not telling the truth I said we were actually on our way out he was not here when we came in I showed my ID to the people I needed to show my ID to when I came in here. And we're leaving now. And he's angry that I won't talk to him. So he calls you. He's using the police as a weapon because his male ego and pride is hurt. And I'm sure you guys have other things to do than to respond to calls of people's egos. To which the officer was like, oh, it's never good to escalate a situation 
At this point, there was no need for me to continue to talk to this officer, so I let this officer say whatever he needed to say, waiting for him to ask to speak back to the employee. Gave the employee back his phone. I got the information I needed from his colleague. I came home. I pulled up my laws. I asked him for his policy, and I told him how I was treated by his employee. <sighs> Two business days later, I got a call back, and I was told I would not be bothered about my feet anymore if I did not want to wear shoes. That was perfectly okay with him, and he was going to deal with his employee for the way I was treated because he never wants anybody to feel unsafe in his establishment. So I'm learning not to draw swords every time somebody do something. There are other ways to fight. And I have to also attribute it, attribute this to Tai Chi as well. That is something else I have taken up. And it basically teaches you how to focus. See, a lot of times we get into battles and things of that nature with people and we just don't know exactly how to go about this fight. We don't know how to say it, what to do it. You become distracted at the little things. You know, I could do battle with the police officer for what he was saying, but what does the police officer really have to do with the situation? That's a distraction to take me off of the focal point. Doing Tai Chi teaches me where to put my focus, where to extend the power, how to execute the blow with precision how to take that person's force use it against them without over extenuating myself how to conserve my own energy by taking their energy <laughs> their wasted energy and utilizing it for myself thereby gaining more energy and keeping my own so it's a lot going on with me right now 2020 is looking to be a very promising and intriguing year i'm expecting walking into all types of abundance and success and i look very forward to it i just wanted to share this with y'all so y'all stay dark and lovely while spreading your love and light and we will see you guys Next podcast. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.